morning, Alex. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Very well, thank you. Well, today we are going to talk about a lot of topics. The first one is the 12 categories, categories, Cat I mean, yeah. for travel to Cuba. From the US. From the US. It's a very controversial topic and very interesting. The other one is Cuba as a paradise and the problem with the credit cards. Yeah. I'm very sure that you have a very recent problem with that. Yeah, because I had a client here and she was getting a lot of issues with the credit card from the US. I don't know why, because we created a lot of content about yeah. that. Yeah. So I want to talk about that. The other one, it's about a surprise with David. I'm not going to talk right now about it. And how to visit Cuba from Canada. Mm -hmm. So this will be the main topics that we are going to talk in this podcast. So okay. let's get started. Okay, you go first. Well, the first one is the 12 categories to travel to Cuba from the US. And actually we are in the uh, website of the Embassy of the United States. Mm -hmm. And they say, I'm going to read this line. Okay. Travel to Cuba for tourist activities remains prohibited by a statute. However, the Department of Treasury's Office of Foreign Assets Control, it's OFAC, has issued general licenses for 12 categories of travel. Individuals who meet the regulatory conditions of the general license they seek to travel under do not need to apply for an additional license from OFAC to travel to Cuba. Oh my God, look at us again. You're speaking very well English. Oy. You're getting better. <laughs> oh my gosh, okay. Keep the going. 12 ca categories, this, this word is very hard for me, I don't know why. <laughs> the 12 categories of authorized travel to Cuba are family visits, official business of the U.S. government, okay. foreign governments, okay. and certain intergovernmental organizations, journalistic activity, professional research and professional meetings, educational activities, religious activities, public performance, clinics, workshops, athletic and other competitions and exhibitions, support for the Cuban people, mm -hmm. humanitarian projects, activities of private foundations or research or educational institutes, exportation, importation or transmission of information or informational materials and certain authorized export transactions. Okay. They talk about the OFAC license and other stuff that are more like, I don't know, the, the law and something like that. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the first one that they mentioned, family visits. I think it's in the most common for the uh, Cuban American that yeah. are in Miami yeah. or yeah. in other part of the United States. It's very common to yeah, to find I, I think they, if they see they're a Cuban, I don't know. I should ask probably Holly, but I don't know if they're going to ask you if they see they're a Cuban, you know? Yeah. Because it's, it's, it's very obvious. Exactly. It's And uh, the most famous one is supporting the Cuban people. Exactly. You will find it everywhere. Uh, I remember the the Tomika's list of, with the support of the Cuban people. It Actually, it's the... The category that the uh, U.S. citizens must use when they travel to Cuba in the why you travel to Cuba, they put the support for the Cuban people. Mm -hmm. Actually, Holly common. said or she mentioned it that is the best one because if you say they're coming for a vacation or whatever, no, it's prohibited. Yeah, so you can come. Yeah. I don't know exactly for the militaries. They are they are prohibited to come to Cuba. I'm not sure. Actually, well, when uh, I had a clan years ago and he was. Uh, a fireman and uh, I don't know if they're firemen they they are military or not but uh, I met some people and they their, work for the government yeah but and it's more flexible. I've met some people in their police uh, police and you know I don't know probably they 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 would probably say the same supporting mm. Cuban people yeah because at the end when you when you get to to the or whatever they don't tell you are you a police or who are you you know unless you are someone very important exactly the other one that they mention is official business of the U.S. government. Mm -hmm. In the 2017, when Obama came to Cuba, it will, I mean, this will be the most important official business of the U.S. government, but I don't know in the years. I don't know. I will, I will highly recommend 
everyone trying for the super yeah, GOP and always. This is with That's a, going to be the, the, the no, one. No, this is exactly between the governments and very specific. So mm -hmm. foreign governments, I don't know <laughs> what are they trying to say here. <laughs> I don't know either. It's, 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 it's very complicated, you know. Journalistic activity. It's common to find people who are coming to Cuba. Actually, Holly said about a class that they had. Yeah, but they they, they couldn't they, come. They couldn't come. Yeah, and it's it was it was complicated the same. here yeah. in Cuba because it depends of the side of the history that you are. Yeah. If you are coming to Cuba to support the government, maybe you can do yeah. it. And if you come perfectly. to Cuba and you say that you you are a journalist, they're going to be asking a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. Where are you going to be documenting? Where are you going to be? If you blah, work blah, blah. for a, for a government agency or if you are like by your own. Mm -hmm. Professional research and professional meetings. That will be possible yeah. if you are, I don't know, if you are a businessman or whatever, you're probably having business in Cuba, you could do so. But I don't, I don't know how possible it would be but yeah educational activities um i think well from my experience i had the opportunity of meeting people who came here for example schools or people who came directly only to see the education or to study in cuba that would be probably one of the reasons if yeah. you want to study in cuba that would be one of the and reasons and people who came here to talk with the young people mm -hmm. um, for conferences exactly yeah that, that so, would be possible yeah they say religious activities too. I don't yeah. know that one. A lot of people came to Cuba not only from the US, from other parts of the of the world, because of the uh, religious activities. It's very common. Cuba is a religious paradise here. Yeah, yeah. And the other one, public performance, clinics, workshops, athletic and other competitions. Probably for artists, but I don't know. Yeah. If you are a painter or I don't know if dancing or photographer. But they have a lot of issues when they travel to the U.S. The, bef the before, no? Before mm -hmm. they the arrive. I don't know. The other one, support for the Cuban people. The most common. That's the one. Yeah. That's the one. That's I think one. that you could even visit Cuba and you could do some other stuff here but you could say hey i'm gonna go uh, to cuba to support the cuban people and then once you land here you can do whatever exactly they're not gonna know exactly what you're gonna be doing but that's gonna be the one and that's that's the most powerful one because ah okay you're going to do it. but at the end if you're going to stay here remember that you can stay in hotels blah 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 so all the travelers that usually come like holly mm -hmm mentioned the, the support of the Cuban people. It's the most common. And actually, there is another one, humanitarian projects. I think support for the Cuban people like englobe everything. Mm -hmm. Activities of private foundations or research or educational institutes. I don't know. It's mm. common to find too. But these ones are like in the support for the Cuban people. Support for the Cuban people, it's very big. Um, yeah, I think it will work for individuals. Yeah. Probably the others, like, it depends if you're a company, if you have something here. Exportation, importation, or transmission of information or informational materials and certain authorized export transactions. I don't know. I don't know. It's a, like a level of the government. So well, we're going to leave them all yeah. down below. So if you want, if you guys want to check them out, you can go. We're going to put the link down below. The link is directly from the U.S. Embassy here yeah. in Cuba. So you can check them out. And they mentioned, too, about the regulations. For details on Cuba, sanctions regulations, including fact sheets on recent changes and information about applying for an OFAC license, please visit the Department of Treasury webpage on Cuba sanctions. They explain everything about it mm -hmm. in that link. And they mentioned that in accordance with the National Security Presidential Memorandum of Strengthening the Policy of the United States Towers of Cuba, madre mía, <laughs> of June 2017, the State Department also published a list of entities and sub-entities, this is very important, that are under the control of or act for or on behalf of the Cuban military intelligence or security services or personnel 
and with which direct financial transactions will disproportionately benefit the Cuban military, intelligence, or security services, our personal madre. <laughs> madre de Dios. Oh, that's a lot of information. That's okay. why I don't study law. No, oh, yeah. I, um, the State Department list of restricted entities and sub entities associated with Cuba. Persons subject to U.S. jurisdiction will not be prohibited from engaging in certain direct financial transactions. I mean, they had a list with the entities that are uh, prohibited to have, like the, like the hotels and yeah, yeah. all kind of, of stuffs. And the other one is about the visas, but. Yeah, they don't have apply. like a lot of information mm -hmm. and it's very important to have here in the restrictions about the the issue that you have with your client and the credit and the big card because it has a okay um i had a client yeah uh there were a couple actually they're in cuba already and uh i don't know the main point that i want to talk about this is if you're planning to visit cuba and you watch my content because she knows me not personally but she knows the exactly, content. the content that you create. And she knows everything about Cuba. Why are you traveling to Cuba? Number one, get in a hotel from the U.S. Okay, you already booked a hotel. When you booked a hotel, you don't need to pay. I need you. You pre like yeah. Exactly. So you come here. She got to the hotel. We did the transfer. We, we didn't offer the, the hotel. We just did the transfer. She got to Baradero. Once she got to the hotel, uh, she was like looking to do the payment and they were saying no you cannot pay because you're from the us so we cannot get visa we can give you two options we can get your passport you can leave it here you can get the room and tomorrow in the morning you can go to the bank they're going to give you an mlc card and then you can pay with that the main issue here was that she was said okay uh i'm going to the mlc she went to the mlc the next day but the MLC car was like prepaid, only $45. So she got the MLC, but it was a waste, uh, waste of time because yeah. she couldn't put Pay, money. Exactly. It was like only $45. She said, okay, I, I'm wasting my time here. What can I do? And I was like, um, we can help you, but this is, this is going crazy. I mean, we had to go for paying ourselves from I'm currently in and uh, supporting her, which at the end, yes, we could help. But the point of all this information is to make you understand that if you're planning to Cuba, you need to know already what you're going to do. If you're planning to come here, you're, you're planning to get um, a hotel, whatever. This is a crazy situation. You're probably, I mean, they said, okay, you can, you can leave your passport, but they could say, sorry, we cannot give you room. And you're going to be staying in the lobby or whatever, wasting your time at night because it was 11 and I was testing her until probably 1 a.m. Like, what's, what's the situation? Let me know. How can we do this? Blah, blah, blah. So the next day we, we arranged everything, whatever. But it was very sad that she was like driving crazy. She was, Alex, this is crazy. Of and at the end, it was, it was, I would say, because you don't know what you're doing, you know because we didn't offer you the hotel, hopefully. Oh, and if you said to me that I'm going to Paradero and I'm going to stay in a hotel, I could advise you. Exactly. But it's very important that the, not only the U.S. citizens, everyone who comes to Cuba has to know that the American credit and debit cards or of their subsidiaries are prohib not prohibited, but you can use it in Cuba. Mm -hmm. It's a completely waste of time. You have to bring your money in cash. Mm -hmm. It's very important to know because they say, oh, okay, I'm going to travel with my credit card because it's safe. And yeah, I don't have to... The Cubans, like Holly say, are very picky with the bills. And maybe she want to, I don't know, uh, I don't know, save time. And I don't know. Yeah. I don't know exactly why, but... So basically what we did here was like, okay, we're going to give you the cash so you can pay. And uh, we looked for a friend of us in the US and she did a transaction yeah. from Sally. Um, so once we received the transaction, the payment, so we, we helped her. But it, it was, I mean, if I was in this, in this situation, it, 
it will be crazy. Yeah. Because I am, first of all, first time in Cuba, I'm going to a hotel. I don't know if I'm going to get the room. I'm, I don't have cash. I don't have money. I don't have anything because I only have the visa, whatever. It's crazy. I was, I was super stressed, but well, problem solved. Yeah. It's very important to know that cash in Cuba, not the credit or debit card, even if you are from Europe, everywhere. Mm -hmm. Money in cash, the yeah. credit cards, like we talk about it in a lot of in previous podcasts. Yeah, yeah, in previous podcasts about it because it's very important. And people came to Cuba and think that, okay, I can pay, pay all the, the restaurants and the hotel with my credit or debit card or no. Mm -hmm. It's complicated here. And now that you have the MLC situation, if you were going to get a card, try to look for a big one. I mean, $45 is nothing. You're not going to get cash enough. Mm -hmm. I mean, And at the end, you get a credit card, but you're putting money in the bank, which is not healthy for Cuban people. I mean, yeah. you can exchange money, you know how. But uh, it depends. If you don't the have the exchange rate for is, the US dollars with low. the MLC, it will be very low. Yeah, yeah. So, so if you don't know what to do, you need info. Yeah, a lot of info. But the sad part is like, hey, you're consuming, you're getting the content. This is free. I mean, I give you all the the the, 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 the honey. Are. How we say in, in, in <laughs> Spanish, we say we're giving you the meal, the honey. <laughs> like we're giving you the light. This is how it works. And people still don't like doing this stuff. Well, like we say in the other podcast with the scams, mm -hmm. it's on the internet, and you can find the bad comments, and people usually still come into that place. Of Well, <laughs> next topic. This was well. The next topic, I think, it's the the David stuff <laughs> with oh, Linus. Oh, first of all, say, please introduce David. Who's David? Well, what he does. Well, I met David in 2021, I think. 2021. Mm -hmm. It. Uh, we met in a party, in a birthday party of a friend in, in common. And we keep in touch and talking, and he saw that I am a photographer. And I saw, okay, what are that beautiful, um, I don't know, potteries? It's the, it's the, the word, no? Mm -hmm. Pottery and a beautiful art. And he said, hey, I'm doing that. And I was like, okay, you do that beautiful things because it's amazing. Uh, like, I don't know how to say maceta. Um, I don't know. Well, maceta is basically <laughs> where you put the plants. Yeah. I well, I'm to going that. to look right now, maceta, because <laughs> I don't know how to say maceta. Maceta. But basically. Maceta also in Cuba is the people yeah. who have a lot of money. Yeah. So it's very flower pot. Okay, the flower here. pot. They pot, plant pot. Okay. Pot, basically. Well, pot, um, potted yard beautiful things and he said to me hey i'm doing that thing and it was like okay it's completely beautiful and i think one or two months later he called me and told me gabby i need a photographer and i saw your work and i really need to work with you because i don't have a photographer for my for my stuff so okay and i was like okay i'm completely uh, grateful for that because When I found uh, something that I really love and it's completely beautiful and I think that I can help to, to uh, I don't know, visualize, mm -hmm. to help to visualize that beautiful art, I think that it's a, a, an amazing feeling, though. And we start working together on March, I think, March or April of... This year? 2021. Oh, 2021. 2021. Okay. And we work in his house with a towel in the to uh, f uh, take the photos of the of the pottery uh, with a lamb. Everything was uh, very primitive. I don't know. <laughs> It was completely insane. And at that time, I'll never do a a product photography. It was my first time. It was completely difficult for me. And I told him, "This is my first time." Doing this. this is completely new for me, mm. but I'm going to do my best. And since 2021 to uh, today, we are working together. And actually, he has a taller uh, like workshop workshop mm -hmm. on May on the last uh, weekends of May. Mm -hmm. But if you can show the 
the potteries or your yeah, the I'm photos gonna, in I'm the video the will be here. very helpful because this is a technique language that is a little complicated for me in Spanish. I can tell a lot of yeah. uh, things about it, but it's complicated in, in English. But he's a young, he's 20, 22 years, mm -hmm. actually. He's very young and he won a competition on the Fabrica, Fabrica de Guano. Mm -hmm was the first uh, place of the of the contest and he was very happy he called me at 11 p.m i don't know it was like gabby i won i was like oh my god it, it was amazing it was completely amazing and since that he had a lot of in spanish it's like open doors mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. a lot of, of ways and people contact him and tell her about the workshop actually workshop start since the the competition in, in fabrica and he uh, make in the summer uh, uh, <laughs> workshops for the kids and it's a beautiful uh, experience because it's like seven and eight years old uh, children and they are very happy with the clay and the pottery and they are very smart so so to put all of you guys in context who's david this is i mean we wanted to give you all this information to let you know if you're traveling to cuba and you love the culture how many stuff Like if you want to meet some entrepreneurs, people who live on the, all this creative like area inside of Cuba. And uh, it's beautiful, actually, what he does. And uh, we wanted to do, like get some stuff here to show you eventually. Yeah. We're, we're going to be able to. We're planning to do some stuff. If you want to search on the, on the website, the name in Instagram is Linus Pottery. So it's very easy to find him. Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> And he has the, like all these beautiful stuff. Okay, we're going to put the links down below. Yeah. And uh, the text right here so you can see it. Well, so what's coming next? Well, the other topic, it's about, I think, the Canadians coming to Cuba. Let me check. Of course. How to visit Cuba from Canada. Do you have the website? So I was uh, looking for this just because uh, Canada is the main, um, I would say, visitor that we have in Cuba. Yeah. And I wanted to give a lot of information to them. So I went to the website and uh, I was looking for some stuff and they have like tr Cuba travel advice. And uh, they have like a green card. I'm going to put it like a screenshots here so you can see it. And they have like a, um, like a mark It says, take normal security uh, precautions. Um, less, um, like the latest updates, safety and security. We're going to be talking about some stuff like yeah. on this page, they have like risk level, safety and security, entry and exit requirements, health, loss and culture, natural disaster and, cl and climate. So when they talk about how safe Cuba is, the risk level is very low. It yeah. says Cuba take normal security precautions. Exactly. In Spanish it would be something like, don't be stupid, you know? Uh, safety and security crime, pretty crimes such as pickpocketing and pores, um, snatching, of course, of course, everywhere. Um, uh, ensure that your personal uh, belongings, including your passport and other travel documents, are secure all the times. Don't pack valuables in your checked uh, luggage. Carry a photocopy of your passport in the identification page at all times. Carry only a small amount of money. Avoid, well, now this one is, is, is a little bit complicated because if you exchange the money, you're going to be having a lot of cash. Avoid showing signs of affluence, such as flashy jewelry or watches. Never carry purses and bags uh, loosely over one shoulder. Keep electronics devices like cell phones, tablets, laptops, and cameras out of sight as they are particular attractives to thieves. Avoid independent street vendors. Mm, yeah. This is also important. When they talk about the violent crime here, incidents of violent crime are generally associates, uh, associated with assaults committed during uh, a burglary or robbery. Mm -hmm. You're reading what I have here? Yeah. Okay. The other one is, is like some hustlers. Well, they have like hustlers, like jineteros. <laughs> This is very weird. Yeah. Hostlers, it means jineteros? I don't mm, know. I don't think so. But in this case, where they're like um, talking about is like people who are driving you or driving your emotions 
through some stuff that like they want to sell you. Yeah, Hinederos is not exactly the the translate because hustler is like uh, like the people who want to who is trying to scam you. Mm-hmm. The Hinedero at some point will try to to scam you. Yeah, but it's not exactly the word. Well, they say some hustlers specialize in the um, in this vine. And the frauding tourists, most of them speak some English or French and go out of their way to appear friendly by offering to serve a tour guide or faci- uh, facilitate the purchase of cigars. This is Isn't very common. Isn't it that we talked in mm-hmm. previous podcasts about the friendly locals? They may resort to violence in their efforts to steal tourists, money and other values. Uh, fraudulent and pesud, I don't know how to say that, probably is that. Uh, pseudo uh, pseudo in Spanish, but I don't know in, in pseudo, English. Whatever. Maybe tour pseudo. agents and taxi drivers also operate uh, throughout the country. Yeah. It's torches. Um, Cuba faces chronic and severe torches of basic necessities, including food, bottled water, medication, and fuel. This is very common all the time. This is something that you should like paying attention to when you come to traveling to Cuba because you need to have the basic stuff. Um, and it's, uh, sorry, Alex, the bottled water, it's very important because people came here and maybe they drink water from any place and they can have like stomach aches mm-hmm. and it will be very, very annoying if you're in a foreign country with all that pain. It's Yeah, yeah for sure. Uh, they talk about the, the, the recent or the current situation with the fuel, fuel short shortages are currently critical and affect a wide range of services. Traveling across the islands is extremely challenging. Public transportation services, including taxis, are often disrupted, leaving tourists with few options to travel. Some travelers have been temporarily uh, stranded with a rental card. Hotels and resorts that often use generators during power outages. Outages yeah. might not be able to maintain their services. Fuel churches is oh fuck that word. <laughs> fuel churches short shortage. Fuel no? churches <laughs> might also affect government services. Local yeah. churches enforce the rationing, rationing, rate rationing. I rationing. Don't know. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> ration. Locals oh, fuck that. Local tourists enforce the rationing of food and medications, which um, which could also affect travels. Oh my God! And it's very important here of the transportation because a lot of travelers ask in the Facebook groups and in Twitter about this, and they uh, say like, "Oh, can I rent a car?" It's not an option. We say this in the other podcast, but it's very important to, like, I don't know in English, you have to say it again. You have to say it again. Because it's very important. The fuel shortage is even a big problem for the Cuban people to get the fuel. So mm-hmm. if you are a foreign people here and you don't know how to, to get it, it will be very, very difficult. They say plan acor- accordingly. accordingly. Bring some basic necessities with you, such as Toy, toilet, toilet tries and medication. Keep a uh, supply of water, food, and fuel on hand. Make sure you always have access to a complete emergen- emer- emergency kit. Power outage. Outage. Power outage occur regular outside of Havana and tourist areas. Obtaining service during uh, an outage is challenging. Trinidad, it's uh, one of the most common places that I hear about the power outage. Mm-hmm. And it's like all the night or five hours every day. So mm-hmm. it'll be a challenge. It's me. Oh, everything I'm reading here is negative. Like, I mean, a lot of them are true. Yeah. But I don't know if it's because I live here. So I know the solutions. Yeah. But if I would be like reading this the first time that I want to travel to Cuba, this is like, whoa. It's a little scary when yeah, you're yeah. in front of this. For example, they talk about the telecommunic- te- telecommunication networks and they say the, te- the telecommunication system in Cuba remains poor, although telephone communication is improving. Connections can still be intermittent or unreliable. But Canadians' cell phones generally work in large cities. Internet- Their roaming service is very expensive, yeah, so... Yeah. It's not an option. I only know few people who are like paying that. Yeah. Internet access remains limited. The country has the lowest level of internet connectivity in the Western 
hemisphere. Oh <laughs> gosh. Even with the government's initiatives to set up multiply uh, multiple Wi-Fi hotspots across the island. But I heard that the SIM cards that the tourists get it when they travel to Cuba and when they arrive here had like a fastest internet connection. I don't know sure. how true it is, mm -hmm. but Tony and, uh, and Susan, they had a SIM card and it, it was very fast. So I don't know. Tony and Susan are beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Woman's safety. Well, we talked we'll about, talk about this. about it. Yeah. And they all said demonstrations. What is this? Well, practicing in demonstration might be illegal in Cuba. I don't know what you're talking about. What is the demonstration here? They occasion, uh, occasionally take place, sometimes without warning. Local authorities might break out political demonstrations or gatherings no san san sanctioned by the government. What's the demonstration? They are talking about the people like... Uh, <laughs> Like, I don't know how like to say July this. July 11th? Yeah. Okay. They may also blocked access to internet, including social media, without notice. Even peaceful demonstration can turn violent at any time. They can also lead to this uh, corruption through traffic, public transportation, and, and essential services. Um, they, they say don't participate in demonstrations. Avoid areas where demonstrations and large gatherings are taking place. Mm -hmm. Follow the instructions of local authorities. Monitor local media for information or ongoing demonstrations. It's very difficult to find demonstrations here yeah. since July 11th because we have like restrictions. Mm -hmm. The Cuban government makes a lot of restrictions for the people that to avoid these uh, demonstrations. So it's very difficult to find. It's very important don't participate in demonstrations if you are a, a tourist, a tourist, because it will be very dangerous. But Ooh. it's not common to see this. No, no. Maybe no. at some times, at some point, but it's not like every day, like other place like Chile or mm -hmm. I don't know Peru. Mm -hmm. And it depends about where you live. Exactly. 11 July, uh, July 11. It was crazy. But now when something like this happens, it's like, I mean, you watch it in social media, but it's not like you go outside and you see it. It's, it depends about where it happens. Yeah. They talk also about road safety. Road conditions on road safety are poor throughout the country, with the exception of the central highway, which runs west to, to east across the country. Yeah, it's, 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 it's bullshit. I mean, yeah. it's, it's mostly destroyed, so make sure that if you want to run a car... You drive safety. It's, it's crazy. Avoid driving in Cuba as conditions can be... Has, what, what, what a language is this? <laughs> Avoid driving in Cuba as conditions can be hazardous. Has, hazardous. What the hell is that? Uh, avoid driving in Cuba. <laughs> 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 avoid driving in Cuba. If you must drive, do so uh, defensively. At all the times, travel during daylight hours only. Travel in groups when possible. Oh gosh, they're they're like showing Cuba as a very complicated country, which it might be for some people, but it's not that crazy. I mean, no. I've done all this stuff and I'm I'm alive. And I think, for example, in Playa Miramar, but it's very easy to yeah, like roll I mean, the even, street. Yeah, in all Havana, it's complicated on Centro because there is a lot of people in the street, but it's the and the, the conditions of the street maybe can be very poor. But it's not like, okay, you're in your car and some people came and, okay, give me your car and give me your money. No, it's no, not no, like no. that. That's not going to happen. You have to keep like all the safety. Um, yeah, you got to be as uh, safe as possible. Don't yeah. be stupid, but... Don't come with a lot of like, oh my God, I'm, I'm going to Cuba. This is going to happen. No, no, no. Um, they also talk about the public transportation, the buses, the taxis. Uh, they say, for example, only use registered taxis. Avoid flying in a taxi down on the street. Always agree on a fare before your, your ride. The last one is the only one that I accept because nowadays we have Uber. Yeah. Only use registered uh, taxis. How do you know? Yeah. Use the taxi, man. And it's flagging. important that the people, it's my uh, personal recommendation, no, the buses situation, the city buses, because 
it's true that are overcrowded and poorly maintained, but it, the the other question about it, it's like the stops. Mm -hmm. If you doesn't live here and you don't know exactly uh, where do you have to to. I don't know. Uh, to stop? To stop. It will be a problem because uh, the routes are very long. Um, for example, if you take in the fraternity park a bus, you can end in the airport. So you have to be very careful with mm -hmm. that or maybe with a local that help you and say, it's not my recommendation. If you can pick up a taxi and yeah, you can go, go to directly exactly from point to a the to place point that you're going, it's safer. Yeah, yeah. Actually, the other day I was uh, getting a collectivo and there was an Italian um, guy and he was like, Tercera y setenta. <laughs> and the taxi was like, uh, and the guy was, Tercera y setenta. <laughs> we passed setenta. And the taxi was, Tercera y setenta. Because probably they don't hear you. Yeah. It's like very... Sometimes the music is too loud and yeah. the noise of the car. But well, you feel, if you want to live the Cuban life. <laughs> the other day, uh, Saturday exactly, I was with Yang in a collectivo too. And a Turkish, I don't know with the uh, with the change. The mm -hmm. Turkish is the, the the way that you can call the people from Turkey, you know? Turkish, yeah. Turkish, I think so. Because I don't know if you know... Uh, our, Turkey. Turkey? They change the name. Oh, I don't know. Because in English, Turkey, it's like pavo. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's like a tonta dump in mm -hmm. English. So they changed the name of the country to Turkey. Mm. That's why I asked you about the, the gentilicio. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. But, well, a Turkish guy picked up the colectivo and he didn't speak any English. He was like showing us the map. Thanks God he had a map, no? <laughs> but it was like, do you speak English? Oh my God. But it's like how people don't speak English and they know they're asking them if they well, speak English. Well, the English, maybe the English war and they know, no, in English. It's, it's, very, it's very funny because when some travelers came to Cuba and asked uh, people in the street, do you speak English? No, I don't speak English. <laughs> It's like, no, really? Are you oh, kidding gosh. me? It's very funny. Um, they were also talking here about the health incidents. For example, they say, there is not evidence that Canadians travelers to Cuba are at risk. Continue to consult the government of Canada's travel advice and advisors for the latest, for the latest updates. Consular assistance is available in Havana, Paradero, and Guadalabaca. Yeah, this is uh, because of the incident of the embassy of the United States and all that. All that shit. Yeah, that's completely shit. <laughs> Okay, entry and exit requirements. Every country to, or territory decides, um, decides who can enter or exit through its uh, borders. Borders. The government of Canada cannot intervene on your behalf if you do not meet your destination's entry or exit requirements. We have obtained the information on this page from Cuban authorities. It can, however, change at any time. Passports. Entry uh, requirements vary depending on the type of passports you use for travel. Before you travel, check with the, your transportation company about passport requirements. The rules on passport validity might be more stringent than the country's entry rules. Ah, this is, this is shit. Regular Canadian passport. Your passport must be valid for your accept during your stay in Cuba. However, ensure that your passport is valid for at least one month beyond the date of your expect uh, uh, expect departure from Cuba in order to avoid delays. If you're both a Canadian and Cuba citizen, you must present your valid Cuban passport to the uh, immigration authorities to enter Cuba. You must also have a valid Canadian passport to return to Canada. And it's the same for the yeah, US citizen and Cuban citizen too. They have to present the, the Cuban passport to the immigration mm -hmm. when you're, they are trying to arrive. If you were born in Cuba, you should contact a Cuban government office in Canada before you leave to ensure uh, compliance with Cuban regulations, regardless of your current citizenship. Failure to do so my result in being refused entry into Cuba or being denied, not detained upon entry. Well, 
Any thoughts? Mm, yeah, a lot of stuff. Other travel documents, for example, they say different entry rules might apply when traveling with a temporary passport or emergency emergency travel document before you leave. Check with the classes uh, foreign, foreign, foreign. I forgot this word. The closest foreign representative for your destination. Visas. Tourist visa required. Family visa required. Business visa required. Press visa for journalists required. Tourist Basically, visa. Basically, you need every kind of <laughs> yeah, visa. Yeah, you need a visa. It's very easy to get, but yeah. you need a visa. Tourist visa, for example, they say Canadian tourists traveling to Cuba must fill out a tourist visa, also uh, known as tourist card. We also talked about this. Land of stay as a Canadian tourist, you might stay in Cuba for up to six months. However, you must obtain an, ex an extension, an extension for stay from immigration authorities if you intend to stay longer than 90 days. All the entry requirements, uh, arrival information, they also has um, the health insurance stuff. You must show proof of valid health insurance to enter to Cuba. This is important. Yeah. An insurance policy, an insurance certificate, a Canadian provincial healthcare insurance card. If you don't have proof of, of uh, any of this, or if the proof you present doesn't satisfy the Cuban immigration authorities, you might have to obtain health insurance from a Cuban insurance company upon arrival. Canada, um, no, this is not important. Traveling between the United States and Cuba. Why is this here? U.S. governments and sections prohibit any tourist travel between Cuba and the United States. You might not travel to Cuba from the United States unless you meet certain requirements. They have a link here. So we're going to put the links. Yeah. It's a lot. A lot of information. It's and they talk about the Sika, COVID, Dengue. Yeah. yeah. They, they are trying to put everything here. Yellow fever? What the f Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we don't have yellow fever here. Emergency medical care for tourists. Prescription drugs. Wow. Fum fumigation. <laughs> what the heck? They put everything here. Drugs. Photographs. It is forbidden to photograph military and police installations as personal. Um, Harbor, rail, and airport facilities. Yeah, we talk about it. Identification. In the you must carry photo in the identification. Mm. They have like insect bite prevention. Many diseases are spread by the bites or infected insects, such as mosquitoes, ticks, fleas, or flies. When traveling to areas where infected insects may be present, number one, use insect repellent, box spray on exposed skin. Cover up with light colored, loose cloth made of tightly woven materials such as nylon or polyester. Minimize exposure to insects. Use mosquito netting when sleeping outdoors or in buildings that are not fully enclosed. I remember this in the US government uh, page, they have like the same uh, tips for the traveler. They also talk about the chikungunya, dengue, zika. And animal precautions, they talk about rabies and influenza. I found black market. They say, as a traveler, you might be approached and offered black market goods, such as cigars, or asked to change dollars for the Cuban currency. They said, engaging in black market transactions is illegal and can lead you to difficulties with the Cuban authorities. Never transport packages for strangers. Pack all luggage yourself. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They said, if you want to drive, you should carry an international driving permit. Um, oh, my. This is way too much. Oh, yeah. We can do a podcast about this. Yeah, it's a lot of information. Uh, well, last well, but not this least. Is, this is important. The cigars. You may mm -hmm. export up to 20 cigars from Cuba without documentation or up to 50 cigars if they are in their original container, closed and sealed with the official hologram. It's important because a lot of people like Tomika mm -hmm. ask us about it. And if you are a Canadian citizen, 20 cigars without any documentation mm -hmm. or 50 or up to 50 if they are in their original container. If exceeding this amount, you must provide a guarantee of origin certificate. Failure to comply with this regulation will lead to the seizure of the cigars without compensation. 
Art objects, including artifacts and paintings, Porsches in Cuba, must be accompanied by an export permit. It's very important if you go to the now in San Jose, I don't know the the big market with the artisans or all the artists. They have to give you the export permit of any painting or like David, the pottery. You have to the permission to. Yeah, to that's the way they have to prove the that is official. They actually talk about the credit cards, like we talk about it in the. The first topic, credit cards issued by the U.S. financial institutions or affiliated with U.S. banks are not accepted in Cuba. We are uh, not tired of repeat this because it's very important. Other credit cards are generally accepted at major establishments and international resort chains. Mm -hmm. So for the Canadians, it's very common to go to the Hotel Nacional at or these resorts. However, private restaurants, they say paladares, and private guest houses, <laughs> casas particulares, don't accept credit cards or of any kind. This is not true. For the guest houses or the hosts of the uh, casas particulares, uh, actually they don't accept credit cards because they don't have like uh, any ways to get that money in mm -hmm. cash. But the uh, private restaurants, the paladares, they accept the some of them mm -hmm. accept the the pay in credit cards. So make sure that you bring the card and you bring the cash, exactly. just in case so you have both scenarios. But they can accept them. No, it's not like they don't accept credit cards of any mm -hmm. kind. So. Credit card cash advance in CUPs may be obtained at banks, hotels, or state-run exchange Boreal. Cadeca. Boreal? It's so funny. <laughs> but it's my very safe bring your cash. Maybe you can get, get your credit card for any emergency, but the cash is the option. So overall? Natural disasters and climate, hurricane season. Well, hurricanes usually occur from mid-May to the end of November. During this period, even small tropical storms can quickly develop into major hurricanes. These severe storms can put you at risk and hamper the provision of essential services. It's important because... It is SARS right now, so you have to be very careful because if you want to stay in the beach and it's a hurricane, you can enjoy the beach or the amazing weather, so it would be a little sad. Mm -hmm. They have a lot of useful, useful links of the tornadoes and some yeah, stuff like that. Overall, they're, they're like painting Cuba as mm -hmm. a crazy place to, yeah. to visit. I don't know why, because yeah. they send a lot of people here yeah, actually Canadian people they love Cuba here. and they love it they love it. love it they and love they it. stay more than two weeks here yeah, yeah sure of course they go to the Cayos and but yeah. whatever but uh come on it's crazy what they say here and a lot of information is too much they will be like this is uh, an apocalypse I don't know if yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I read that first time before coming here I would I, I wouldn't come yeah, a couple uh, contact me in, on Instagram and ask me, maybe they uh, read all this information and they were like, all this is completely true. And I was like, okay, you have to be careful. Uh, but the normal care that you will have in other place or in other country, I, I think was Holly who said about Paris and all the crowds and all the, was okay. Holly? Uh, she was saying that if you want to visit Cuba for looking for a beach and other stuff. No, no, no. Uh, about the, the situation in Paris that is very risky. Was Holly who said yeah, it? Yeah, she said that. Yeah. She said that. So in every country, you have to be careful because... What are you doing? <laughs> are no, you? I'm just... I'm just, <laughs> I'm just <laughs> it's like, like the guy in Instagram. What are you doing? Nothing. I'm going I'm live. hanging around the, the guy uh, with the. <laughs> so you were saying? About what? What? I'm going live. <laughs> oh my God. Just hanging around. <laughs> okay, so. we are talking about the Canarians talking to, talking on coming to Cuba and all the information that they had in the, the official website of the embassy. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of information and sometimes can be like overwhelming. A it is it is overwhelming it is i mean oh my god it depends about for example if you if you want to travel to cuba now that we have read this i don't know if looking for information within the embassy's websites all this stuff is the best option yeah because 
for example, I, I look for tips in vlogs, websites, whatever. Yeah. For example, if you go to Amkernel Inn, we have a, a fax, like, uh, page. Most common yeah. questions. Most frequently question. And we don't say that if you want to visit Cuba, it's going to be raining all day. And we don't say that if you want to visit Cuba, people are going to be looking for you to, I don't know, to ask you for money. It might happen. Yeah. But it's not going to be like, be careful of this. this, this. Oh, shit. It's crazy. <laughs> so we're going live. Um, huh, we have here. Oh. <laughs> so guys, we're doing the podcast. Actually, you're going to... You're gonna listen to this uh, probably on Sunday, Monday. I yeah. don't know. Let's see. And we're we're trying to give you a lot of information here. We're in the middle of Havana. We're gonna finish the podcast right now, and <laughs> I'm gonna show you. So stick around. Uh, we've been talking about um, how to visit Cuba from Canada. We talked about the twelve uh, categories. The twelve ca cat categories that you can uh, use to visit Cuba. The most important one is going to be on the podcast. We also talked about some um, opportunities that you can that you can have if you want to visit Cuba, looking for the culture and uh, looking for some uh, special opportunities to meet entrepreneurs here in Cuba. Uh, so we can say, let me show you, Gabby. <laughs> yeah. And also we talk about the credit and debit cards issue here in Cuba, and Alex talk about the experience that they have with the with the client of the agency. So the tour operator, sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it was very. We, we were we talking like one hour, almost one hour here. Well, we've been we've been talking like almost almost an hour. Yeah. Yeah. No. So it's going crazy. Yeah. Let's see how it goes. So. Uh, see you guys. Uh, we're gonna be the video podcast is always on Monday. I'm I'm trying to edit as fast as I can, but it's 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 difficult for yeah. me. We have a lot of content. <laughs> Actually, this week, the last week, I was like trying to to to, to go slowly. Like it, it, it is hard for but me. But it's the content for the video podcast and the micro content for Instagram are yeah. the shorts for the YouTube. It's yeah. a lot of information everywhere. <laughs> So let's see. So say goodbye. Goodbye and ciao, ciao. Ciao, ciao, what do we get you?